Volkspielen! Ahoy there, Volkspielen here, and welcome back to another episode of Volkspielen, where today I'm going to be going over my top 10 picks of the video games of 2020. Um, again, top 10, these are the games that I've enjoyed the most over the year that I wanted to mention, put them on a list. Now, I will admit there are two games on here that some people might not include in 2020 lists or argue about, but again, this is my list, so I get to decide all that. And uh, if you think a game should be on here but isn't, there are two other lists that I have made. Um, I'll have them linked in the description. The first one being the top five video games that I was disappointed in. And I wasn't saying that they were bad, but they just didn't really live up the height or expectations of the game when it came out. Or something that happened during along the lines of it. And then there's the top five video games I wish I played in 2020. Because I am human and I can't get to every video game that comes out. So if you still uh, think that there's a game that you should should be on any of those lists but aren't, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And then with all that out of the way, here are my top 10 picks for video games of the year of 2020. At number 10 is a game that came out two years ago in 2018, being Among Us. Now, Among Us, even though it's been out for two years, the reason why I'm putting it as the top game of 2020 is because how much it has exploded on the scene. Uh, with the streamers and the memes and the overall fun ability of it, you know, because it became so popular, uh, the developers actually canceled their plans to make the sequel to focus on this game because, again, of the large uh, investments from everybody. And uh, there's been lots of mods, and it's an incredibly enjoyable game with friends. However, one of the weaknesses of the game is, I would probably say, the public lobbies because you tend to get a lot, you tend to get hackers. Or people who just seem to just do stuff for the memes. Now, I will admit I've done that before. But at the same time, that does kind of kill it for people that are like, oh, I want the true Among Us experience. So I would recommend to do that with your friends. Because this is an extremely fun party game. And definitely a contender of a, the top games of 2020. Number 9 is the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLCs. Uh, Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Though I will admit the Crown Tundra is the far superior DLC that came out this year. And it being extremely fun and introducing a new system, which is why I prefer that on the list instead of the Isle of Armor, which is the Dynamax Adventure where you and up to three other friends go through this dungeon where there's a bunch of these Dynamax Pokemons and you have to battle them down. Until you can get to the final land, which has like the legendary Pokemons from previous games. Now, this is an extremely fun uh, concept, and I wish they would retain this for future games because, again, with the exclusion of like Pokemon Battle or some of the other like mini games, there's not that many um, multiplayer aspects of Pokemon except for these raids, and I believe that's uh, an improvement for Pokemon is to actually include more than just two people. Because, I mean, you're going to have the people who will do the tournaments, and they'll stay there. But it's also good to kind of experiment while keeping the new stuff important and center. Number eight is World of Warcraft Shadowlands. Now, this is a game that I am a huge fan of. I love the Warcraft universe. I love the MMO I've been playing since uh, Wrath of the Lich King. And I was actually wanting to put this up higher, but I kind of maybe put this lower than it should be just because I didn't want to seem like prejudiced. Or not prejudiced, but uh, favoritism, I mean. <laughs> but um, I believe that Blizzard has taken a lot of good steps forward with this game. Uh, they've definitely made it so that way they can kind of expand further beyond what they have done before in World of Warcraft. Uh, by introducing the Shadowlands as a place to go and, you know, help further along the overall story of Warcraft. And then they've revamped the leveling system, including a new introduction leveling zone for new players, which is a lot of fun. I've actually run a few characters on it. It's very engaging, and it teaches a lot of players about the new stuff, about their character, and how to perform, like, dungeons, which is, I believe is a very important concept that new players need to learn. And um, 
Now, the story is a little bit bare, not, but I will, you know, I, that's fine. It's Not everyone's there for the story. I think the gameplay is a lot of fun. And uh, they seem to be fixing some problems that they had from the past. Uh, but they're still working on it, and I feel like it's a good game, so I'm ranking it 8th. Number 7 is Helltaker. Uh, Helltaker is this free-to-play game which you assume the role as the Helltaker, this guy who wakes up one day and wants to make a harem full of demon girls. So he goes down to hell to get them. And it's just a bunch of these puzzles that you have to do. Now, they are challenging, so, you know, heads up. But it is free, and you could probably beat the game in about... It took me about an hour or so, so it's kind of quick and easy. Uh, there is, like, a secret ending, so you... Uh, it does have a little bit of replay availability, but I think it's just a real fun game, and it's quick, easy, something that I do recommend people to do if they're bored and they're like, oh, I want to try out a game. Well, you know, puzzle games are fun, or at least they are for me, <laughs> and uh, that's why I'm putting it here for number seven, just because it is so short, but it is free, so, you know, it kind of pays off, because you don't want, like, you know, a triple-A game for free, because that kind of screws off the developers, so number seven is Helltaker. Number six is Carrion, which this was a fun reverse horror game in which you're in a lab, but instead of being like a security guard or like a scientist who's being hunted by some sort of monstrosity inside the lab, you're actually the monstrosity. So you're like this like Lovecraftian, the thing, horror with these tentacles and just teeth and you're just riling around just in the ground and in the water and you're going around trying to uh saw uh trying to pretty much try to escape so you got to go through these new areas to go through and you know you're you're killing people you eating them to get bigger and you're trying to figure out how to escape um it's very fun. I enjoy it. Uh, I will say the controls are a little wonky, especially on the controller, which I played on Xbox. So it's probably a little better on PC, but the um, trying to switch out your powers was a little tedious. I will say that, but it's a fun, cool game. It definitely kind of re reinvents the horror genre where it's like, hey, you're the monster. And I feel like it does a really good well. And plus it has the like Super Nintendo pixelized... Um, aesthetics so that's always kind of a nice flavor for it so i definitely recommend that and that's why kerrigan is number six on the list number five is clubhouse games 51 games i keep wanting to say 55 but it's 51 and you get a bunch of these uh games that are like around the world you got like mancala uh checkers chest uh texas hold'em bunch of card games and you can play against the pc or you can play with your uh friends uh, I think you can only play it with two players online. I can't remember. I'm none of my friends got it, but I always just love playing backgammon. Um, with my whenever I went to go visit my folks, I would bring my Switch and we would play backgammon, and I just really enjoyed it because again, it's kind of hard to find a backgammon set without being you know in a retirement home. <laughs> Uh, but it lets you try out a bunch of games that you probably never heard of or from different parts of the world, which is always, you know, it's good to broaden your horizon. Um, now, I will say this is kind of like the same thing with like Among Us, where pl uh, playing with friends is way better than playing with against the PC. There is no like, I think there is a way to meet up with people online. I've never used that function, I'm going to be honest. But uh, it is a lot of fun to play. I love playing just the games by itself because, again, I just really enjoy, um, like, backgammon and the classical board games like Yahtzee. And uh, that's why Clubhouse Games 51 Games is my number five pick. Number four is going to be the Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, I don't really, I don't know if I should explain why because I think anyone that knows knows why it's awesome just because you got... Super Mario 64, Super Mario Galaxy, and then probably one of my favorite games of all time, Super Mario Sunshine, all in one game and for the Switch. And I just, I adore playing these games. It's just, I love, I think 3D Mario is a lot of fun. Like Mario Odyssey, that's a really fun game. Sorry, I kind of had a brain fart there. But, um,. Even though I really do like this game, the reason why it's not a little higher is because I will say that the 
uh, missing of Gal- Mario Galaxy 2, plus with the time restriction of it being only available until March 30th or March 31st, uh, 2021, which kind of really puts like a sour taste where it's like, I don't understand why they would limit this. This is such a fun game, but, well, games, <laughs> But I, I, I don't know why Nintendo is limiting that. Nintendo is a... Sometimes they do good stuff and then sometimes they just do weird stuff. So that's why Super Mario 3D All-Stars is my number four pick. Number three is Phasmophobia, which is kind of like a... It's a horror game you can have with multiple players. And um, I think that's kind of a cool concept where it's not like, you know, it's like, oh, someone's a monster, like, dead by daylight. And it runs really good. I mean, you know, you can do some glitches like the door glitch so that way if the ghost is haunting you you can just escape but it's a lot it's a really fun game and i kind of like the detective work i love doing like you know trying to figure stuff out like mysteries Uh, i think those are fun you know going around and uh solving what kind of ghost you're hunting and trying to survive and it's a lot of fun and the uh, proximity chat that's a good introduction which I saw the mod for a Among Us a proximity chat, and I feel like that would be really cool to add to the uh, base game. But uh, again, back to Phasmophobia instead of the number 10. Um, the reason why I didn't put this any higher is because uh, some of the uh, bonus objectives to get the money, because you tr- you know, you're trying to get money, um, it can be kind of boring to try to wait for, or are you just overall trying to you know like just skip it, and it's like you're missing out on money. Like the uh, dirty water, it seems like I get that half the time. And it's just like, it's always just, you know, not fun to wait for that. But um, the, uh, I also don't like jump scares, I'll admit it. And when the ghost does stuff, it's like, okay, I don't like this. But I'm not going to punish it for that because this is that kind of game. But uh, Phasmophobia is a really fun game and that's why it's at number three. Number two is Animal Crossing New Horizon. Now, um, Animal Crossing, I believe, has always just been a solid series uh, with maybe one or two exceptions. Every time the game comes out, it's always highly reviewed and is a very fun game. It's very relaxful. Relaxing, not relaxful. (laughs) That's not a word. Um, But I do like the idea of where where you're able to, like, edit the island and, uh, you know, move people where, you know, previous games you are only able to maybe move people. But I do like this upgrade where you can actually design this island to be your own. And I feel like that's really cool concept. And Because I've seen many different islands and they're like, wow, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? And it's just really cool and it's enjoyable. And it kind of came out the right time with the uh, quarantine starting and everyone was getting their games. And... Um, It's just really enjoyable, and they keep, you know, having these festivals, and I kind of want to see if they will do anything in the future differently, like maybe, um, not necessarily like a paid DLC, but if if they're going to add anything new. But I will say that one of the cons of the Animal Crossing series, if they don't add like a DLC, is the magic does kind of wear off, like after three months of gameplay, where you're just kind of hopping on, and you're just essentially just doing chores, because, I mean, basically, that's it. You're just hopping on, talking to some villagers, checking the stores, you know, plucking the weed. And then that's kind of it. But, I mean, there are stuff to do. I mean, you could be like, oh, I want to build this. I want to work towards this. I want to get a gold uh, shovel. I want to collect all the bugs. And, you know, those are fine. But I do feel like it's just um, once you do that, they kind of, you know, don't really retain that. But, I mean... It is a good game, and you can even just hop on for like 30 minutes. I feel like that's kind of the success for the Animal Crossing uh, franchise. So that's why Animal Crossing is number two. And my number one pick for best game of 2020 is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, this is an amazing remake. And what I really enjoy about this game is it keeps true to the story, but it adds a lot of new stuff to the game. And it's like it's almost like a different game or like a different take of the Final Fantasy story in which they updated, made it way more interactive and just improved on the game that came out in 97. Um, the combat, I feel like 
Um, they've done this kind of combat before in Final Fantasy 15, and I believe they really like improved it. I really enjoy uh, again the combat is so much fun and fluid. Um, just overall the story, the characters, the game is like it's beautiful. The story um, it has a lot more details, and I can understand if they wanted to keep up this quality. That's why they split it into two parts. Is if they can just keep up this quality of making the game. It's fantastic. I'm really excited to see how uh, Square Enix goes further beyond with the uh, Final Fantasy VII remake to see if this can, you know, maybe be applied to past games. Because if they're going to do it to a past game, it'll probably be Final Fantasy IV. Seriously, look it up. They have remade Final Fantasy IV so many times for. I don't know why. I like Final Fantasy IV. I haven't beaten it, but uh, that's a different story. Uh, now, for cons, I really had to, you know, replay and look. Um, I can see some people complaining it about being very linear, where you're, you know, you're going from point A to point B. There's not really an open world, except for where you have sections within the story where you had to do these, like, side quests. With, and the side quests were really fun. Now, I don't have a complaint about that, because, like, um, I, if anyone makes a comparison to Final Fantasy XIII... You only had really one section where the world, where Final, where the um, Final Fantasy Thirteen was an open world, and that was like nearly towards the end of the game. And it's like you know, it's like I don't want I'm too invested in the story to really care about this side stuff. And I kind of like how they did that. And uh, you have your own goals and all that jazz. Um, there's a lot of like go to the spot mechanic. Um, which I'm not super a fan of. And then also whenever you're fighting and you have the AP bar that you load up and you're like doing an attack, but then something stupid happens, like the robot just gets like a hit and it like immediately knocks you out um immediately knocks you out of it and it's like, well, there went the two bars that I was saving up for an entire minute gone. Uh but I mean I can look over those parts because just Final Fantasy Seven, it was just such an amazing game and I Truly enjoyed, and I'm you know I'm excited to see how Square Enix kind of goes um, in the future with the Final Fantasy VII remake. And again, just with all my praisings, that uh, you probably hopefully understand why I made this my top pick of the games of 2020. So there it is, my top ten picks for 2020. Um, again, I wasn't able to play every video game, but uh, hopefully I did. You know, try to cover everything. Um, I didn't want to pick any games that I didn't play and go off, like, reviews and all that. Because I feel like that's not really fair to anybody. Because it's like, I should be able to, I should have played the game to exp have my own experience of the game. Along with you guys. Now, this is just my recommendation, my opinion. And you you guys could, you know, take the five games I'm most disappointed in. You can replace my top five with the uh, five from the most disappointed if those are your favorite games. Because, again, it's what you want to play, not what I want you to play. I want you to play whatever you want to play. That's the honest truth. But uh, tell me if you like the list. Tell me what games you would put in your top ten list or even top five. Um, or tell me any games you think I missed on any of my lists that I should uh, really explore and try out. And see if I you know, make an opinion on it. Um, so I'm going to be continuing this style where I'm going to be doing like record over of opinions. Now they're not going to be exactly like, you know, like, uh, games that came out. They're going to be a little different and I'll explain more next week. Cause, uh, ironically what I was going to do next week was going to be my first video style or not my video. So i my first video topic, but then I was like, Oh wait, 2020 just ended. Why don't I just do a bunch of 2020 reviews? So um hopefully you'll come back next week tell me if you like those um but i'm just kind of rambling at this point so don't forget to like comment subscribe hit that bell icon for notifications and then till next time peace